What's going on guys? So we're back again with another gameplay video. This time we have Tim here on the left playing Kidku and we have Perth Pro Players team member Jimmy here on the right playing the new Red Jiren leader. So just before we get started into the gameplay video, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Team Card Titan. So if you guys want any DBS seal products or DBS singles, make sure you check out that link in the description below. And for all the people within Australia and New Zealand, check out their auction page on Facebook as well. Now, Kidku, uh, definitely a favourite of mine from back in the day. Uh, I know Tim's running a little bit more of this uh, one-drop skillless engine, which then allows him to go into the Gogeta chain with the addition of the new Black Goku and Vegeta one-drop skilllesses, which is pretty cool. Uh, makes it a little bit different. So... Interesting to see how this is going to go. And then this new red Jiren leader can be an absolute powerhouse. That 8 cost, absolutely insane. Uh, draws a lot of cards or at least filters through to get a lot of cards because pretty much all the effects going up the chain add some cards to hand, which is absolutely insane. Um, and then being able to get free plays off the leaves of effect or getting free plays off the unison is really, really strong. I really love the deck. Um, it is matters if you see the chain or not and obviously in your early hands you kind of want to see um the whole engine if you can because it starts to get things moving or at least the unison and a one cost and then hopefully ripping a one cost off the top so jimmy's going for a charge just here so he is charging the one drop Jiren just here taking a life uh hopefully we have a unison here if not i believe i did see the other one drop in hand but it looks like we are going to hit kunchi anyway uh still getting a draw which is quite nice um, this one being able to give the rest of the cards barrier, or the, sorry, the one drops barrier besides himself. Um, it's not the best of the engine. Usually you do want to hit, of course, any of the Jirens because they are uh, obviously a lot more important in this matchup. So then you can start to get your evolves going. Uh, so we are going to hit the one drop Jiren. We get a check top. So hopefully finding something we can evolve into or sometimes it's worth just grabbing a one drop if you need to search them all. Looks like we're going to hit a five cost here. So I can't actually see what is in Jimmy's hand. Hoping he has maybe the free cost uh, evolve and then maybe another five cost in the next turn. Potentially even a unison as well, which would be quite nice. So then he can start adding a few markers to it. Uh, but I'm assuming here we're going to be passing over to Tim. Uh, not really too much else for us to do during this turn, seeing as our first turn. So Tim, drawing a card, he does have a Kiku in hand, which is great. So one big thing in this deck, right, is you need to open either a four-star ball or a Kidku, that's kind of the ideal thing. Kidku's great, because then that just goes and gets you a ball every turn, which is awesome. And then you can start thinning your deck, start getting your draws. Always important as well, count how many balls you've got in the actual deck, okay? And then you can also have a look at other things too, to see where other chains and pieces are, right? Which is quite nice too. So just having a look through, it's always good when you can search your deck to see what you've actually got left in there. Um, so. What he can do now is reveal it, draw a card, right? And what we want to do is we want to get to that backside as quick as we can. Uh, but this is an ideal turn one play. Only downside here is this Jiren being able to evolve and just kind of minus this. But at least we do have one uh, four-star ball in hand, which is great. So it looks like we're going to swing into the Kunchi. Just clearing off the board. I don't think Jimmy really cares about it. That's easy. Just let it go. Let it die. There's no need to keep that hanging around at all. Um, it's more the Jirens and things that you want to keep on the board. Looks like we have just hit a topo. Um, now when this was played as well, this is before like ban list and everything hit, so we could play tower. Um, so this is kind of the deck I feel like a, a pretty strong potential being able to play like towers and things like that for free. Uh, but we are going to hit that leader effect, find the little one drop the Jiren, be able to draw a card. Again, it's not the greatest. It's still good though. You definitely want to hit a one drop no matter what, so you do keep getting cards. Pretty much most of the game, you're getting two cards off this leader effect on the front side, and that helps to build up your hand so much, which is great. Uh, so we are going to, it looks like, hit into the unison here, uh, which is awesome. Get a one marker. I assume we plus, hopefully having something to play at the end of turn, which I think we do have maybe a one drop. Uh, and more than likely, we go for an evolve here as well, so then we can start building up some markers. And it'll be good to hit that four cost now. If we do have the four cost, it'd be great because then we can just get rid of that kid Kidku again. That's just going to get passive value every turn. So exactly what we want to see, that four cost. Get rid of Kidku. And then we can put a marker onto our unison and then also draw a card because we've hit an evolve. 
um, which is awesome, you know? So, uh, sorry, plus five on the unison, plus a marker. Draw a card, minusing 10 is on the effect of the Jiren, but that's still great. A lot of value, and again, um, an evolve chain that allows you to just keep uh, adding cards to your hand as you're going up is very, very strong, very powerful, because uh, you're not actually losing anything by trying to go up the chain, which is awesome. So we're gonna give plus one to the leader. Looks like we're swinging here with a 10K. Just gonna take the damage. Again, we wanna have a vanilla in the drop so we can awaken the six which isn't too hard to do, hopefully. Uh, swinging in with 11. Potentially looking at comboing out, maybe. I'm looking at Tim's hand. Um, he may decide to combo out so he doesn't have to go down too quickly because Jimmy does have two more attacks here. If he wishes, and they are 19, so it makes it a little bit harder. But it doesn't really matter too much, I feel like, at this point. Um, we can kind of awaken. You're not comboing out of 19s, but... Jimmy will probably just leave this bad boy standing anyway um, to protect it a little bit more so then he can go into the Evolve in the next turn. So we're just passing turn, it looks like over. Hitting the one drop, Jiren here, off the top of effect, drawing a card, which is quite nice. So re-standing, charging an energy. Great thing is we do get our reveal, we get our draw. We just need a vanilla in the drop area, which we're going to hit here. Right, so we can combo these off if we wish, so we can get our Awaken, which um, is not a bad choice. Of course, what you want to do is hit um, the Reveal on the front, draw a card, and then flip. Get our energy back, um, and that's probably the best thing. Now, I believe as well, I think we have a Trunks in hand here, so we can very easily go for um, our Evolve if we wish. Uh, sorry, our Overrun, and then I'm not too sure if we have a Gogeta in hand, but if we have a Gogeta in hand, that'd be awesome as well. So if I was Tim, what I'd probably do is swing in and then just combo off one of the one drops here, um, just getting it off the, off the board, so then we can get our Awaken straight away, um, and then we have our energy up for a little bit of protection. Now, this is always a hard choice, right? Do you focus on the Unison, or do you start swinging into Leader? Now, I think probably most of the time you focus on that Unison, in this case, right, just getting it off the board if we can, because the spirit boost effect being able to evolve is quite strong, um, and he can hit a spirit boost and just minus 10 off one of them. So it looks like what we're going to do is we are going to swing in here. Um, so we have a chance for a difference of stat. Looks like we're going to minus 5 and then take a marker off, then allowing it to minus 10, I believe, which is quite nice. Um, so we can just get in the drop area, but again, this is going to allow Tim to awaken if he wishes as well. Um, and it's it's kind of free value, I guess. So swinging again into leader. Now this is probably where we go for our awaken. So we can flip during this because we do have a vanilla and drop and we are at six or less life. Uh, which is quite nice, and then getting that energy back because we do have a power burst. And the good thing about the power burst is we can then cycle um, into our Vegetas as well, right? So, interesting to see what he decides to do here. Passing turn, it looks like, rather than awakening. Maybe just saving it in case he wants it during this next turn, which is fair enough. Um, I probably would have wanted the power burst up knowing we are going into turn three. Uh, that means we do have access to the eight costume. 8 cost Jiren, very, very powerful. Um, can just clear a bit of the board there, which is nothing that's too threatening. But being able to just minus, uh, I think it's 35, if I remember correctly, is absolutely insane. It's very, very powerful effect. And the fact that it can happen on your turn as well, sorry, I should say during your opponent's turn, I guess, um, that's where it really becomes devastating when you can just hit one of their battle cards minus 35. It's very, very strong, very powerful. So we are going to use a leader effect. We are going to hit another one drop here. So usually, on ideally what we want to do is we want to be hitting um, the other Jiren with a beanie. It kind of looks like a beanie, don't know if it is. So then we can start digging for more and more pieces, right? Which Jimmy's just charged one of those guys. Um, but that card, I feel like, very, very important in all these matchups, right? So then we can keep finding. And the great thing about this one-drop Jiren here as well, in the drop area, it gets us that value. So we can bottom deck it, discard a card, and then find a Jiren with an Evolve skill, which is awesome, right? So being able to do that as well is very strong. Now, it wouldn't surprise me here. Jimmy will probably go, yep, the Mercenary Tower. So then he gets his crit. 
start swinging in before um, we're down at four or less life. So then the super combos aren't live uh, for for Tim right here. And that's definitely a good good swing just there, hitting a double strike champer. Double strike champer always can come out of nowhere. Very strong, very powerful card. So we are going to hit, it looks like, the Bell mod. So again, as I said, this is back before Belmod Tower and everything was banned, okay? So he's gonna hit the tower, he's gonna hit the tower and the two dunes. Now what he can do is if he wishes, so if maybe he doesn't have an eight cost in hand, he can actually flip that dune um, and then what he can do is go for the eight cost because it does have an evolve skill and flip um, and I guess get a bit more pressure into this leader. So it looks like we're just gonna swing Mercenary Tower in once again, crit, swing it into the leader, very powerful, right? Um, has another 15k if he wishes, a dual attack 19k, and then also a 20k. So it looks like we're going to hit the 20k here first. No combos yet, so super combo is probably the best thing, just to go for it. Um, and I'm assuming what he's doing is probably holding onto his power burst so that he can uh, defend if we do decide to go into 8 cost, which I think is the right choice here as well. Um, and then the good thing is he can get one of his Kid Kuz back if he wishes. So it looks like we're going to swing in a 19k. So swinging a 19k, the fact that this has dual attack as well is great. So it's 19k and then potentially it'll be um, a 35k double strike swing as well. But as I said, more than likely probably going to eat a power burst there. Uh, so let's see what Jimmy decides to do. Remember, he should remember that he has um, the one drop in drop area if he doesn't have the eight cost in hand. I'm pretty sure it can search any with Evolve if I remember correctly, uh, which is great, but it looks like we do have an eight cost here. Obviously not being able to minus anything, a little bit sad, but at the same time, having this beater on the board is just so very, very powerful. Um, so we're swinging into leader, more than likely eats that power burst, which I would assume is the right choice just here. Don't wanna hit a double strike too early. Looks like he's gonna grab a Goku. Um, I believe he does have another Kid Ku in hand, which is okay. Uh, we are going to take a piece from underneath. So usually, preferably, what I do is, if I'm gonna take any pieces, I would prefer to hit uh, the one drop from underneath, just because we do run the yellow Dune, right? Most of this run that yellow Dune. So the fact that you have two one drops in the drop area is great, because then you can play them out with the effect of that card. And I guess, technically, it's like a super combo in a way, so you discard that, get 10k combo. So we are gonna swing in, it looks like a 15k here, um, into the leader, taking it up to 20k. Uh, great card as well there from Tim, that one cost. Um, very, very powerful when your opponent uses counters, having to warp cards, it's great. So if you can build a few of them up on the board, which unfortunately in this matchup doesn't really happen, um, it can be really detrimental to the opponent. So it looks like we are going to uh, combo again. So. What you usually want to do in this deck, if you can, right, is keep a Kiku on the board for as long as possible so that you reveal, draw your two, you discard the four star ball, and then you add the four star ball back to your hand from the drop area, which means that you do get your plus two, which is great. Um, and that really helps to build up that hand over time. Um, now, I can see we are running that Bardock Unison, which can help us draw a little bit more as well, which is great. Uh, and this deck is not short on draw power. Uh, so having an extra card to be able to draw even more is absolutely insane. Now, the card that we probably want to hit here, but again, we need to be able to get two uh, of the, or sorry, one of the Goku, one of the Vegeta, into our warp as easy as possible, right? We need to be able to do that. Uh, pretty sure we have our six just there comfortably. Um, so it looks like we're probably going to go for our overarm. Um, Having, of course, having that in, in our uh, warp is very important so that we can start to hit our uh, Gogeta. And our Gogeta promo can really help to clean up a little bit, especially against this Jiren here too. Just being able to clean that up was important, I feel like, in this matchup. And I believe we do have um, a Gogeta in hand. So I believe as well, if I remember correctly, Union Fusion, you can do one from hand and one from warp if you wish. Uh, which is quite nice for him. So I know he does definitely has um, a Goku and Vegeta in hand. Pretty sure he picked them both up that last turn with the two power bursts. So we are going to take a life. And then we're going to have our blocker here, of course. Uh, looks like, yeah, we just use use the dice as a token or use the card, whatever's easier. 
um, unless you just carry tokens around and you can use the tokens, it's even better. But usually I just use the card as, as my token for it because I'm lazy and don't carry tokens around. Um, so Tim hopefully will get his uh, Gogeta Zeno out here. That way we can start putting a little bit of pressure onto the leader because we are in that awakened state now. Uh, we do have a blocker, of course, on the board, but just being able to get rid of that Jiren, I think, is very important here. Uh, just as soon as possible. You don't want that card hanging around at all. And the fact that we do have our Gogeta here is really, really strong. So it looks like we're going to hit... We have a Goku and we have a Vegeta. Perfect. So we do have one on one. I uh, didn't see... I forgot about the Super Combo being a 5k as well. So we can match it with that Goku, which is awesome. Um, so what we can do is on swing, we get to warp a card, which is awesome. Unfortunately, there's no real response to this card hitting the board because um, we don't have our unison up at all. So it looks like I'm assuming we're swinging into our leader here. So being able to do a double strike, and then we just want to be able to warp that Jiren straight off the board, because um, then that saves that coming out, and then we have to start a whole new chain again. So it looks like we, instead we're going to swing into the Bell Mod, um, which we're going to block. So that gets warped, and the other two go to the drop area. Um, and then we block, let that go, which is completely understandable. Uh, it's definitely worth saving your cards just for that little blocker. It is a 20k swing, which is valuable. But it looks like we're going to hit the Bardock Unison here. Uh, and I'm assuming we plus one and we draw a card here. That's the ideal thing. Um, and to start plussing up, probably start swinging into the leader a little bit more. Putting that pressure, seeing if we can get the opponent to, I guess, awaken as, as soon as possible. Um, so it looks like maybe we're going for the minus there instead. I think he went for the minus rather than the plus. So we're going to pass back over to Jimmy here. He gets to untap everything. Now, look, it depends how, how confident he feels right now. Because what he can do, and if he knows how many one drops he has in the deck, he can always hit a life and see if he can get... Um, see if he can get some of the one drops onto the board, which would be quite nice. The only thing is, obviously, being locked under that minus two, which was on the Bardock, um, he does only get the... Um, he has to attack, and then he has to choose one card in his heart and send it to the warp each time. Um, so that kind of is a little bit detrimental in this, but it looks like we are going to hit the leader effect. Uh, what you probably do here is just try to build up your chain again, and get yourself to a point where you can hit uh, the eight cost and minus that Gogeta. Just get that off the board as soon as possible. So that card hanging around and getting continuous value is absolutely insane. But the fact that we can passively get rid of it by minusing 35 on it is really strong. So we're going to top five here. Good thing as I saw at least one June, I'm pretty sure just there. Um, I don't think it was the yellow one. I think it was the red one. Um, maybe we have some choices. Potentially, it looks like we're looking at hand, so potentially have a couple choices. Um, I think it's a five cost. Looks like the one cost. Oh, that's okay. Still a great card, and again, um, it allows us to use our one energy before we awaken anyway and start getting pluses. And the good thing here is on the back side, when, if we do awaken early and we start going up the chain, we do have that limit to effect where we can start plusing five on our leader every time we evolve, which is awesome. So we're going to check top again, hopefully finding something once again, perfect, hitting a 5 cost. Now, as long as we've got an 8 cost, um, we should be good. But at the same time, we do have those Jirens in our drop area, right? So the fact that we do have the Jirens in the drop area means that we can bottom deck, discard a card, and go and find any part of the chain we need, which is awesome. Um, so it does only hit the 5 or less, right? So that's the only downside, can't hit the big boy. Um, but at least being able to, uh, I guess, go and find more pieces is valuable, right? So looks like we're going to hit one and one here. So as I said, it's almost like having a super combo. So we're just going to hit one and hit a Kunchi, um, give the rest of the one drops barrier. Obviously not this turn right now, but after uh, we pass, get those skills because they are negated with that Jiren's effect. Um, 
So hopefully here we do have a bit of the chain. Looks like we've got the five costs. So we do get, I guess, technically two markers, I guess, right? Well, not markers, but we do get two pluses. We get the one 1K from the actual effect, and we do get a plus 5K from that effect too. Wondering if Jimmy has the big boy so he can just clear this off the board as soon as possible. And I think that's really what he needs right now. I don't think he wants to start discarding cards, but definitely think... Um, Swinging into at least the leader here, I would say would be quite valuable. Um, getting another draw and then hopefully finding our eight cost. Now I'm pretty sure with that Bardock, it's only battle cards when they attack. It's not all cards. I'm pretty sure it is only the battle cards that make you discard the card when you actually swing, which can be pretty annoying, of course, having to lose um, cards on a swing. We know how detrimental Topo and things like uh, the new boo is and everything like that, right? Um, that can always be really painful. Good thing here, though, is we can get our draw off the leader, which is what we want anyway. Um, put a little bit of pressure. We can leave some energy up. Doesn't look like... Unfortunately, doesn't seem like we have... Um, doesn't seem like we do have an ACOS. Otherwise, I think we would have probably gone into that to get this off the board. But it looks like we're going to start digging instead. And Jimmy kind of realizes how important it is to hit here. So digging a little bit, trying to find this 8 cost. I believe we hit a charmer and a 4 cost there instead of the 8 cost. But you don't want to commit too much to these swings, right? It's not really too worth it. Um, but it looks like we are going to take the damage here, which is quite interesting. Uh, having a little bit of protection on the 5 cost. So we can hit this minus by 10. Right. It's not going to do a hell of a lot right now because um, we probably don't want to start discarding too many cards to these swings unless we feel like we've got a decent amount of combo power uh, and then protection on the way back. We're probably not going to start swinging too much into these guys anyway. Uh, minusing 10 obviously helps being a 15, but looks like Jimmy may decide to go for it. Maybe swinging into the, uh, maybe swinging into the leader. Because I believe he does have a double strike in hand. Um, so maybe he's deciding to try to go for game here. Looks like we are. So we're going to swing in. Put a double strike behind. And we've got a decent amount of combo. So we do get the Gine effect. And we get a plus another card six. Which is awesome. right? So we do get a little bit extra buff. So it's almost like an 11k combo. Um... We do get the draw as well. And then I'm assuming we probably shotgun the rest of our hand here. Because I'm assuming we would have minused here on the leader by 10k. So we are at a 35 uh, base with the effect of Freezer Death Ball to the 5k. And then I'm assuming we just do the rest of the hand and probably most of the board as well. Just to try to get this damage through. Um, there's nothing really Black can do to stop it without energy. And we don't have any energy up right now. So a double strike can definitely finish the game off here. Um, and it was probably worth just discarding that or warping that one card just for this swing here to try to get a win. Um, I'm, I'm surprised he's not shotgunning the rest of the hand. We are just hitting on that. Unless he feels like he's got more. Uh, maybe he's got another double strike he can get through. And then he's happy to just warp one more card. Uh, but I definitely think you take advantage here of the Freezer's Death Ball because we have minus on that leader, which is very, very powerful. So it looks like we're gonna combo also with the SCR in hand. Um, and I think Tim showing that was definitely enough. So we got 25, 35, 40K um, to a five. And he's also got the overarm as well. So there we go, guys. So uh, a little bit of a steal there with the uh, final swing on Belmore. The freezer death ball into double strike champa. As I said, double strike champa wins some games. Very strong card can come out of nowhere i hope you guys did enjoy the video if you did please remember to subscribe hit that bell to stay notified and i'll catch you on the next one